Welcome to the training program on ChatGPT for machine learning and data science. Our world changed decisively in December with the introduction of ChatGPT. So much so that if it is AI, it is ChatGPT. The primary focus of the program is on improving your productivity as a data scientist and machine learning engineer. You can apply the art and science of prompt engineering to code better and debug faster. A cornerstone of this program is the focus on data privacy. In an era where ChatGPT has been integrated into a multitude of plugins and applications, understanding and tackling privacy challenge is of paramount importance. I am Govin and I come with over two decades of experience managing business transformation, technology and strategy in MNCs and startups. And I will be bringing my experiences and perspectives into this program. In this session, we are going to understand about the OpenAI framework. OpenAI consists of many different products and the most famous one is obviously the ChatGPT. In addition to ChatGPT, Whisper and DALI are also interesting products and they are gaining a lot of popularity. You can call these as platforms also. A platform is also a kind of product. Okay. So with that understanding, let's understand a bit more about OpenAI. OpenAI is basically an artificial intelligence company. More than a company, we can say it is a research lab. It consists of uh, two entities. One is a for-profit entity and the other is a non-profit entity. Okay. And uh, this company conducts research, pioneering research in the field of artificial intelligence. They want to develop and promote AI in a way, in a manner that benefits the whole of mankind. Okay. That is their stated objective. It was uh, founded in the United States uh, in 2015 uh, by Elon Musk and others. Okay. Though Musk has since resigned uh, from the board, but he continues to be a donor of this company. Uh, the other interesting fact that I want to share is Microsoft has invested, you know, close to about a billion dollar in this entity. Okay. Many people ask this question, whether chat GPT has heralded the end of Google. The answer to this question possibly lie in Microsoft's interest in chat GPT and open AI framework. Okay. So as I mentioned, OpenAI consists of uh, these three entities. And let's understand about these entities a bit more in detail. ChatGPT, as you may already be knowing, is a conversational chatbot. Okay? It is essentially a chatbot. You ask a question and it throws up answers. Okay. It is based on GPT, that is Generative Pre-trained Transformer. What is this GPT? We will uh, see very shortly. Okay. And this was launched as a prototype very recently, only on November 30, 2022. And uh, it has since gained uh, many, many users, you know, more than a million users. And the number is slowly and steadily increasing. Okay. And what is it used for? It is used for a variety of things from writing essays and assignments, even creating programs, debugging programs. Debugging is the process of uh, correcting mistakes in a computer program. It can even provide uh, insights uh, to composing music and many, many uses are possible in chat GPT. Okay. The next one is Whisper AI. Whisper AI is about transcription and translation services. It uses natural language to transcribe uh, audio files and to translate content that is there in audio files to the language of choice. Whisper supports uh, many languages. You know, it is not just about English. It supports Asian languages. It supports Indian languages. Of course, European languages are there. 
So it supports a variety of languages, right? That is very interesting. DAL E is about image generation. What is image generation? Let's say you give a phrase, okay? A picture is worth a thousand words. The AI systems in DAL E will generate images that correspond to the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. In fact, we are going to see this specific example when we discuss about DALI in detail. In this session, let's create uh, an account with OpenAI so we can start using OpenAI and ChatGPT. Uh, you need to come to openai.com, scroll down to the bottom of the page, you see the option login. Let's click login and uh, you will come to the sign up page. You can sign up and login using uh, your Gmail ID or Microsoft account or alternatively you can give your email address. So a verification email will come from OpenAI to the email address you have given. You verify and then you continue with the rest of the process. Uh, you can also type openai.com slash login. It will bring you to this page directly. Let us continue with the Google option and I need to provide my Gmail ID. Once you are logged into your browser, this will appear automatically. Otherwise, you have to enter the details and password. Okay. After this, you have to provide your mobile number so that you get the verification code to complete the process. You can get the code either via SMS or via WhatsApp. I am going to choose WhatsApp. Okay. So I get the code in my WhatsApp. It's a six digit code and you enter this code in uh, OpenAI login page and the process is complete. There are two terms that are often used while discussing about ChatGPT. One is LLM or large language models and the other is generative AI. I wanted to explain these two terms as it will help you to understand the technology and the working of ChatGPT. ChatGPT belongs to generative AI. It's a type of artificial intelligence that can generate human-like content. That content could be text, images, music and so on. Generative AI is designed to learn patterns in data and then generate new type of content that is similar to the data that it was trained on. ChatGPT uses a large language model to achieve its objective of generating human-like text. LLMs have been trained on vast amount of text data which forms the foundation to understand and generate human-like text. So, what is this large in large language model, large here refers to the size of the model in terms of parameters. What is a parameter? In simple terms, parameters are the parts of the model that are learned from the training data and they are used to make predictions. ChatGPT has about 175 billion parameters. These parameters enable it to generate remarkably human-like text because they have been trained on a diverse range of text. But they also mean that the model is very large and requires a lot of computational resources to run. You can think of parameters as something that indicate the relative importance of different characteristics or features involved in making predictions. If you predict whether it will rain tomorrow or not, you will probably consider humidity and temperature. Which one is more important depends on the data you have collected. How you indicate this relative importance is known as weights or parameters. A model is nothing but a mathematical representation of real world process. It is essentially a computer program or an algorithm with multiple steps from input to output. A model refers to the specific AI system that has been trained to understand and generate 
human like text. This system or model is based on a particular architecture of a neural network. For example, GPT 3 and GPT 4 developed by OpenAI are based on the transformer architecture which is particularly suited for processing sequential data like language. During training, the model learns the statistical properties of the language from a large corpus of text data. After training, the model can generate new text that resembles the text it was trained on and it can fill in missing parts of text, translate text, answer questions and perform many other language related tasks. The model actually includes all of the components of the system, the architecture of the network, the parameters that were learned during training and the methods used for training and generating text. For example, a machine learning model could be trained on a data set of images of cats and dogs and it would learn to distinguish between images of cats and dogs on its own. Once the model is trained, it can classify new unseen images as either a cat or a dog. Models can vary in complexity from simple regression models that try to fit a line to a set of data points to large neural networks that can have billions of parameters. We have seen model and large in large language models. What is this language? In the context of large language models, language refers to human languages like English, Sp French, Spanish, etc. These models are trained on vast amounts of text data in one or more languages. The purpose of training these models on text data is to learn the statistical patterns of the language. For example, in English language, the word the often precedes a noun like the cat. By learning these kinds of patterns across billions of sentences, the model can generate text that follows the same patterns and therefore look like natural human language. In this session, we are going to understand the technology behind ChatGPT like transformer technology, neural networks a bit more in detail. Let's start with the very basic. ChatGPT is essentially an artificial intelligence system. Machine learning and deep learning are the technologies that enable artificial intelligence. And deep learning is a more advanced form of machine learning. Both machine learning and deep learning, they learn from past patterns in whatever data we feed into the systems to predict the future. That's how machine learning and deep learning works. Okay. In terms of technology, machine learning is very effective for handling structured data. When I say structured data, I am referring to data in the form of rows and columns like what you have in Excel file and relational databases. Deep learning technology is very useful and very effective for handling unstructured data like text documents, emails, social media files, image documents, video files and many more. The dominant mode of artificial intelligence today is known as VKI where we work by detecting patterns and using them to predict the future. The more advanced form of artificial intelligence is known as strong AI. Strong AI is what we see in movies which depict human-like robotic uh, structures. Strong AI is also known as artificial general intelligence and artificial super intelligence. With chat GPT, we are touching the outer layer of strong AI. Where it is going to take us remains to be seen. Chat GPT uses deep learning. A basic type of deep learning is known as artificial 
neural network. We use the word neural because the way deep learning works is very similar to the way our human brains operate. Okay. In an artificial neural network or any deep learning system, you will have an input layer, a hidden layer and then there is an output layer. Okay. Hidden layer is where all the processing happens. We use the term hidden because the way the processing happens is not accessible to us. A more advanced form of deep learning is known as convolutional neural network. CNN was created to better handle images, videos and similar type of data. Okay. People are not satisfied even with CNN. Then we went to a more advanced form of deep learning known as recurrent neural networks or RNN. RNNs were particularly helpful in NLP. NLP is nothing but natural language processing. It is used in applications like Alexa and Siri. Right? So what is the difference between a a simple neural network like a feed forward neural network and a recurrent neural network. In a simple feed forward neural network, information moves in one direction. It moves from input to hidden to output. Whereas in a recurrent neural network, information goes through a cycle of loops. Okay. Here, the neural network is not very good at predicting what is coming next. Okay. Whereas RNN is very good at predicting future. Here only the current input is considered okay, and it does not have any notion of order in time. RNNs consider current input and also the recent past. Okay. Here the feed forward neural networks cannot remember what happened in the past except the knowledge from training. RNNs are able to remember due to its internal memory. It creates output copies those outputs okay, and uses those output to loop back into the network. That is how RNNs work. right? People are still not satisfied with RNNs. Hence, they went to transformers. Chat GPT is based on transformers. Okay? So, what is the difference between RNN and transformers? RNNs were very good for sequence to sequence challenges okay whereas transformers are good for extended challenges which obviously means rnns were not very good when it came to extended sequences okay because the capacity to preserve information from the initial components was lost right so when you have extended sequences you need to have your system remember all the possible inputs and the associated learning in transformer, this past information or past input was not lost. Okay. Transformers use what is known as a self-attention mechanism to weigh the relative importance of different parts in the input. This is very, very important point when it comes to transformers. So, this allows them to process sequential data effectively. Okay, so the middle layer in the transformer contains encoder and a decoder. Okay, that's a very important aspect of the transformer model. Okay, the other aspect is start of sentence marker is also fed to the decoder so that the context is better understood. If you ask a question, which type of artificial intelligence is better? The encoder decoder model must understand the context in which the different words are said. So, that is achieved by the use of start of sentence marker, and sometimes we also use end of sen sentence markers. Okay. So, to sum up, Chat GPT is essentially a transformer based language model, it uses deep neural architecture you know, deep learning of artificial intelligence. In fact, it uses a variant of the transformer model, what is called as the transformer decoder model. 
it is designed for language tasks like translation transcription summarization you know and also text completion the important aspect of the transformer decoder model is the self attention mechanism okay it gives the relative weights for different parts of data and to process sequential data effectively okay so that is achieved by the self attention mechanism in fact the transformer model was introduced uh, in a paper title attention is all you need okay and this was authored by google researcher vaswani and others in this video let's ask chat gpt to create a python program let's create a python function for palindrome what is a palindrome palindrome is a word or a phrase or a number that reads the same backwards as forwards for example look at the word madam m a d a m i can go from left to right or right to left both are the same no from left to right means i am going from here m a d a m if i am if i am reading from right to left it is the same no such words are known as palindrome okay so i am going to ask chat gpt to create a python function to identify whether a particular word is a palindrome or not okay if you know programming you will be able to understand and appreciate the concepts of function function helps us to organize the codes better in a computer program functions are very useful to manage repetitive tasks in a computer program in a matter of speaking function helps us to automate parts of computer program okay so let's ask chat gpt create before that let's ask what is a palindrome okay what is a palindrome right let's ask what is a palindrome see it is giving the answer okay so word phrase or other sequences right it is giving the example madam right please understand it's giving examples level race car these are examples of palindrome now we said we are going to create a python function so create a, a python function to identify a palindrome okay let's click this and see what it comes up with here is a python function that takes a string as input okay and returns true if it is a palindrome and false if it is not right it is giving this and you can you have the option to copy the code right you can take the code into your development environment see how easy it is okay it is even checking whatever code it has written it is now checking by giving strings right remember what i said you know, palindrome is a word or a phrase or a uh, you know uh, numbers whether you read from left to right or right to left both are the same okay like madam so this particular computer program this particular com computer function helps us to identify whether a particular word okay or a string is a palindrome or not so it a program has been written and this is written in python okay this is written in python and it's also testing in fact i did not ask the function to do this right so this is very good no now let me introduce some error in the code written by chat gpt and let me test whether it is able to identify the error and correct the error okay let me copy this okay and uh, let me ask this question correct the errors in the below program below computer program okay now i am if you see this there is a 
gap or what is called as an indentation that is part of the syntax syntax is the way computer programs are written okay so there is a specific format in which you have to write that is known as a syntax if you see here that needs to be a gap or what is called as an indentation see here there is a gap okay let me show that once again see there is a gap okay so i am going to remove the gap right if i remove the gap and if you actually run the computer program it will throw an error because the specific syntax of a function is not followed right if i execute this three lines of code okay or five lines of code it should throw up an error it will definitely throw up an error i want to check whether chat gpt is able to identify that or not okay now let me click this it has identified it has correctly identified here is the corrected version of the program see this in the original program the first line of the function was not intended correctly see these errors would cause what is known as an indentation error this is beautiful no it is clearly identifying the error it is even correcting the error right now interestingly when i asked the same question some time back about 2 hours back or so chat gpt said there were no errors in the program okay i gave the same program where i induced some errors okay i fed the same thing that is these five lines of code and asked chat gpt to identify the errors in fact i used the word identify okay it said there are no errors and now if i try it has correctly identified right so what is the takeaway chat gpt has got the potential to write a program identify errors in a program but it can also make mistakes please note that that's a very very important point so the reliability of chat gpt is not all that high you still have to use your knowledge and understanding to check for errors so please keep that in your mind in this video i am going to show how to build a machine learning model for an insurance scenario the scenario i am referring to is the one you see on your screen i will be using these six factors to predict insurance charges so the data set is an insurance data set we will be having factors like age sex bmi and we will predict the insurance charges right so let's copy the data set paste it into uh, chat gpt and ask chat gpt to do some basic analysis and also build a machine learning model that's what we are going to do now okay the algorithm that is relevant for this scenario is multiple regression in fact it is known as multiple linear regression let's understand and let's evaluate whether chat gpt is able to first of all identify the data then does it pick the right model for this data set of the scenario right let's indicate here i want to analyze the below data set and i am pasting my data and let's click this right see it's picking up information about the data set okay and it mentions about how this data set could be analyzed right let it complete uh, we will ask chat gpt to do additional analysis first we will say uh, please generate uh, descriptive statistics for this data set descriptive statistics is the starting point what are descriptive statistics things like mean median standard deviation they provide information about what is there in our data set so let's ask this and 
I want this to be done programmatically. Let's see what it does. Uh, if it does through other means, we will ask ChatGPT to create or generate descriptive uh, statistics using Python. Okay, so let's click enter, see what it comes up with. See, it computes mean, median directly, right? Standard deviation, those are the things I mentioned, right? Minimum, maximum. They are descriptive statistics, right? So, based on the data we have inputted, it is identifying or creating the descriptive statistics. It's calculating the descriptive statistics and providing them to us, right? In fact, it is computing the descriptive statistics for each of the variables or each of the x that we enter, right? Let's wait for this process to be complete. Uh, we will then go to the next set of analysis. Okay. Now I am going to ask uh, uh, create descriptive statistics hand histogram using Python. Okay. So here I am being specific. In the earlier instance, I did not mention you know that I want Python code, right? I merely said generate descriptive statistics, right? It can calculate it directly. Okay. Python is one of the ways. You can use any other programming language, right? So here I'm being specific. Okay. Create descriptive statistics and histogram using Python. Let's see what it comes up with. Right. See, it provides the code. It says import pandas. Import matplotlib. Pandas is the library for uh, handling data, you know, a tabular data like the one that we inputted, right? It reads the data set, which is the first step, and then it prints uh, different things, right? This will display the descriptive statistics and histogram, right? And it also mentions, you know, how many bins will be there, okay? You can even adjust uh, the number of bits. See, it provides an alternate way to create gen, uh, to create descriptive statistics, right? df.describe will automatically provide the descriptive statistics. All I need to do is I need to copy the code and run it, right? Now, let's ask uh, Python to create a heat map, okay? Let's see what it does. Create a heat map using Seaborn, okay? Using Seabone library in Python. Seabone is one of the libraries. Uh, if you see this used uh, Matplotlib. Matplotlib is one of the famous libraries in Python. Here I am asking Seabone library to be used. And I am saying create a heat map. Right. Let's see if it creates a heat map. Let's see how it displays. Right. It's providing the codes again. Okay, starting with reading the data set, okay, and then telling how to create the heat map and how to display the heat map. It also tells what is a heat map. Heat map is nothing but a correlation matrix. So, in a single view, we can understand which of the variables are strongly correlated. Okay, is it age that correlates strongly with uh charges or is it number of dependents or is it BMI, right? It could be any of this. Chat GPT is providing us a set of codes, the explanation on how to use them, right? It also provides addi additional snippets, right? Like explanation of what is a pair plot, okay? What is a heat map? It provides all of that, right? Now let's ask one more thing. Um, uh, fit a machine learning model for the above data set, for this data set. Right. Let's say this, for this data set, 
right here is an example of how it can be fitted it talks about the right library scikit learn right that gets imported it reads the file see it correctly defines the x and y remember it's all uh, a y equals f of x equation it defines the y and x which is a very important step in machine learning then it splits the data set into training and testing that's the right thing to do okay it fits the model and then it prints the accuracy as well right isn't this wonderful it even tells some additional information right there are many other machine learning models that can be used like random forest decision tree this is wonderful right let me ask some more details okay uh, what is the accuracy of the above model in the given data set now I'm asking a very specific question, right? The accuracy, it provides some details. It tells how to assess accuracy, which is R squared value. It also tells uh, it can range from zero to one, right? The code that ChatGPT provided will give you the accuracy of the model. What I'm trying to check is, whether chat gpt can run the model and tell the accuracy for us that's not happening right what this means is you can input your data set so that chat gpt can suggest the right machine learning model for you it also provides codes to fit the model split the data set and provide the codes for measuring the accuracy it is not running the codes for you please note that right it's it's creating the codes and giving it to you you need to go take these codes run it in your development environment and the job is done right one of the questions that i am asked is whether chat gpt is going to replace human beings the answer is a big no right let's take this example itself you need to know machine learning you need to know how to run the code in the development environment and after the code is run you need to know how to evaluate the machine learning model how good the fit is how good the model is that cannot be done by the current state of chat gpt maybe the future versions of chat gpt could do how long it's going to take for that we don't know right because we are in the chat gpt3 right that is the third generation we don't know what is going to happen in the fifth generation and the tenth generation right all these information if you see are available in google so what is the difference with chat gpt the difference is the way you engaged with the chat bot or the search engine in chat gpt and the way the responses were provided it is not possible for me to copy a data set in raw form in Google. I cannot do that. The other problem with Google is there is information overload. When I go and ask Google for information on multiple linear regression, I will get a lot of information. I need to spend a lot of time to process those information and decide which one I'm going to use that step is completely avoided with chat gpt so chat gpt is going to enhance the productivity significantly okay in its current form it is not going to replace human beings please get this clearly in your mind okay in this session we are going to create a streamlit machine learning app with the help of chat gpt before Coming to chat GPT, let's understand what is Streamlit. If you see the AI landscape, it is evolving fast. I will say 
that these are still early days in AI. So the focus has been on building models and analyzing data. Though many packages are available to create graphs and powerful visualizations, data scientists sometimes don't talk the language of users and stakeholders who want to see the outcome in the form of crisp tables, graphs and powerful visualizations. Often it is due to lack of web-related technical skills like JavaScript, HTML, CSS, etc. on the part of data scientists. We can't blame them too as one can't be a master of multiple technologies. An app that helps end users to upload data and see the results for themselves is actually a strong need. Since there can be multiple end users who may even be outside of the data scientist organization, this app needs to be a web-based app. Moreover, end users are comfortable with a web app and a web app is an expectation too. If you look at the requirements for developing a web app for artificial intelligence, we need to take care of these five things. The most important, according to me, is the tech stack. Web and AI skills are rarely pursued by same set of people. So we really need a large team of AI and web developers to develop an AI web app. This challenge is addressed by Streamlit. Streamlit actually takes care of all of these requirements. It is easy to create a user interface as well as hosting the application. You don't need to worry about the backend too. So everything that is needed for an AI web app is taken care of by Streamlit. Now let's ask ChatGPT to provide us the codes needed to complete a Streamlit web-based machine learning application. Okay, we are going to be developing a NLP based application. That is, we are going to develop a word cloud based on some sentences from a blog post okay so let's ask chat gpt okay we will wait for the response we are going to copy the code and uh, take the code and build the web application as you can see on your screen chat gpt is suggesting the set of codes okay in fact i am not going to make any changes to the code I am going to simply copy the code, run it and complete the process. Okay, so that's what I am going to do now. Let ChatGPT uh, complete uh, the process of providing the response. In fact, it gives some additional details as well. Okay, now let's uh, copy the code. We will now paste the code in a notepad and save the file in one of our folders okay as i indicated earlier i am not making any changes to the code provided by chat gpt i am going with whatever code chat gpt has provided once the text file is there i am going to run streamlit app from my command prompt okay I have already installed Streamlit, so I am going to run the text file. But before that, I need to reference the folder where the text file is being stored, which is what I am doing through the change directory process or CD. If you see, the text file is stored in a folder called Word Cloud. Word Cloud is inside a folder called Streamlit, and Streamlit is inside a folder called Suni. So CD stands for change directory. I am doing all this from my command prompt. Okay. Now I have referenced the folder where the text file is kept. 
now i am going to run the text file as streamlit run that particular file name okay i have saved the file as app1.py and i am giving enter now it is running you are going to now see a link which is basically an ip address through which we can access the web application the objective of the web application is to feed some text data some sentences and the output is a word cloud word cloud is a representation of the important words that are there in that particular stream of text right so i click that particular uh, ip address it takes me to the local host it is still running as you can see uh, you know the top right corner so i am now going to paste the text from my blog post uh, the details of the blog post the link to the blog post i have provided in description okay uh, i have pasted the contents of the blog post and i am going to click generate word cloud right and it will generate a word cloud and word cloud as i indicated earlier is a visual representation of the different kinds of words that are there in my uh, text that i entered you know in that block if you see this uh, particular blog post is about predictive maintenance which is why the word predictive maintenance things about preventive maintenance is prominently mentioned the bigger the font size in your word cloud it indicates the relative importance and the higher frequency of the usage of that particular word or words right that is the power of word cloud just by looking at it you know which word or set of words have been used more in that particular uh, series of text or in a blog post right so i am able to uh, create a web based word cloud where users can enter the text and see the result in the form of a word cloud for this i use chat gpt i use the codes from chat gpt and i did not make any change right if you see this particular web application is locally hosted i can also host this in an external site that is i can provide a clickable link using which internal users and more so the external users can access this web application in this session we are going to look at a banking case study we want chat gpt to access the data that is stored online this particular data set is stored in github whose link uh, is there in this scenario the bank is considering factors like uh, marital status number of dependents education level whether the individual is self employed or not applicant income co applicant income uh, and other factors like credit history and property area before deciding whether a loan can be given or not i am going to provide this link to chat gpt uh, i want chat gpt to access this data set i want chat gpt to understand the data set i am not going to paste data directly into chat gpt here i am only going to provide a link let's see how chat gpt understands and processes the data we will make use of uh, gpt4 that has got the ability to browse internet and uh, get information uh, gpt 3.5 doesn't have that capability gpt4 is available only for paid users i'm starting off by asking whether gpt4 can access the data stored in the uh, particular link i'm providing the link and asking that information so gpt4 is uh, checking is clicking on the link and it is trying to read the information for us let's give it a few seconds gpt4 is relatively slower but its responses are very crisp to the point and very pertinent uh, gpt 3.5 is uh, faster 
but its response is not as crisp as what I got in GPT-4. That is the key difference that I observed between GPT-3.5 and 4. So when you are using GPT-4, be prepared for some delay. It is not a, an inordinate delay, but some delay is there in uh, responses from uh, GPT-4. So the data that is stored in the GitHub link has been accessed. Uh, GPT-4 is able to identify the headers. Headers are nothing but column names. Uh, typically, when we create a data frame from a, a table, from a database, we go and check the top three records or top five records using a command like df.head of three. Uh, GPT-4 is doing that without our asking. So that is the key benefit with GPT-4. It understands our requests beyond what we state in the command prompt, uh, in the uh, prompt area. Let this process get complete uh, and we can go on to the next set of commands. Uh, the process in machine learning is we load the data, we do exploratory data analysis and then we get into the model building. That is the process. Now we have accessed the data, uh, we have looked at the column names, uh, we have also understood the sample rows that are there. Now let us ask uh, GPT-4 uh, to do exploratory data analysis for the given data set, right? I want GPT-4 to identify the different types of analysis that can be done. I am not even telling the kind of exploratory data analysis uh, I want ChatGPT to do. I am merely asking what kind of exploratory data analysis can be done on this data set. Uh, GPT-4 is providing the response. It is indicating the different types of analysis that can be done. Uh, it starts with uh, descriptive statistics. It provides details of what can be done as part of descriptive statistics analysis. This is something that we can use or we can skip. Uh, the next area that uh, GPT-4 is suggesting is data quality assessment. You go and check for missing values, uh, outliers and inconsistent entries. Uh, we should not have outliers and uh, uh, null values in our data set because it can skew the results. The next one is correlation analysis. We want to understand how each one of the variable uh, interact with the other variables. This is an important step. We need to check whether there is uh, multicollinearity. Those things can be checked from correlation analysis. The next one is data visualization. We want to visualize the data so that I can understand the uh, outliers. I can understand the way the data is distributed. I want to look for skewness. I want to look if there is any kurtosis and other uh, such characteristics at play in the data set. Okay. I also want to create something like a contingency table. Right so that I can visualize the data in kind of a matrix. Last but not the least, it is also suggesting hypothesis testing, right? So you can create some hypothesis, you can validate those hypotheses uh, before you go and build your model. Uh, if you look at uh, the suggestions, in uh, correlation analysis, it is suggesting a heat map. In uh, data visualization, it is suggesting histogram, bar charts, and scatter plots. Uh, it's even suggesting pair plots. Uh, these are very good visualizations uh, that could be considered uh, as part of uh, exploratory data analysis. Now that ChatGPT has provided uh, areas that can be considered in uh, exploratory data analysis, I go ahead and ask, can you give me uh, the code itself? I understand uh, activities like cross tabulation, uh, contingency table hypothesis testing should be done as part of uh, exploratory data analysis. Uh, I am not an expert in coding, so why don't you give the code itself? So, can you give us the code to accomplish this? Right, so it is creating a, a code snippet to do exploratory data analysis. First, it imports the necessary table and reads the data, and then it goes to descriptive statistics. 
right so it, it is giving us the code all we need to do is we just need to copy the code take this code uh, to a development environment like colab execute it and the job is done okay uh, it is giving now the code for data quality assessment as well okay the next one is correlation analysis look at the way it is giving it is numbering the code snippets right two is data quality assessment three is correlation analysis four is data visualization it organizes the code very well as well one thing i want to highlight is uh, you can't take chat gpt codes as gospel truth and go ahead with your life there are a lot of errors that come up in the code provided by chat gpt that is my experience which is why chat gpt cannot replace data scientists or machine learning engineers it can improve the productivity but it cannot replace because there are definitely errors even when we run this code uh, there is every chance that errors could come up okay where chat gpt scores over is it organizes the code better it provides us a good starting point especially for people who are not uh, comfortable with programming gpt4 is a is a huge blessing as i said gpt4 is better compared to gpt 3.5 in the crispness of the response okay now we have done exploratory data analysis now we are getting into model building before i actually build the model i am asking gpt4 what kind of machine learning model can be considered uh, for this data set right for this the gpt4 has to correctly identify the dependent variable without an understanding of the dependent variable that is whether the dependent variable uh, is an s no type of variable or a numeric variable that is whether it's categorical or numeric uh, we can't decide what kind of model to use so gpt4 has correctly identified the dependent variable this is very very important uh, people as they go through the uh, understanding of machine learning some people actually struggle with identifying the dependent variable i'm not saying everyone but identifying the dependent variable and independent variable correctly is a process in itself for many of the budding machine learning enthusiasts here you see that chat gpt has identified the uh, dependent variable correctly it is giving us uh, a set of techniques in fact it is giving us six uh, machine learning models starting with logistic regression right that is one of the oldest machine learning models but very efficient one when it comes to uh scenarios like the one we are considering okay uh decision tree is also a wonderful one random forest it is used very widely in the industry gradient boosting that is also a very good uh, uh, algorithm uh just for your information random forest you know and gradient boosting are used extensively in the real world because the level of accuracy we get is uh, significantly higher okay of course you need to consider the scenario on the type of data okay always keep that in mind uh, then it's also suggesting support vector mission and neural networks can we use neural networks for uh, a scenario like this yes we can use right but is it the best use of resources no okay so i am going ahead with random forest so i am asking uh, chat gpt to give me the code okay provide the code to fit a random forest model for this particular data set so here gpt4 is giving me the data set so i can uh, get going with my life right so it is importing the necessary modules right it is loading the data uh, it is pre processing remember when i showed the uh, data in the github link uh, there were some uh, uh, null information right uh, certain fields did not have values right so you need to address those things then you are going to define x and y okay uh, then we need to split the data and then we fit the model finally we also assess the accuracy of the model so this is the process we load the data uh, we do exploratory data analysis we look for null values uh, uh, outliers and other extreme points uh, we address them we address the inconsistencies and inaccuracies in the data we define x and y uh, we then build the model and then we look for accuracy that is exactly what gpt has done and the way the code has been structured is also very efficient 
look at the way it is uh, making use of hash right we don't do that in real life uh, it has organized the code very well so even if you look at this code snippet after a month you can clearly understand because the comment section with the use of hash uh, is very very uh, efficiently done okay now we have completed uh, reading of the data uh, from an online source we have done exploratory data analysis we have fitted the model now i am becoming greedy i am asking whether chat gpt can actually copy the code by itself okay open uh, a google collab link and execute the code right that is my uh, question here uh, chat gpt gpt4 is clarifying to us that it cannot do this uh, activity it can only access the data right can only access the data uh, it can understand the data and then we need to provide the prompts we need to ask the questions uh, to get the response it cannot open an external site on its own uh, paste the data and execute it maybe in future versions gpt4 could do this but not in its current version however it is providing how to access it is giving us the link for collab uh, it is giving us the steps uh, to copy and paste the code snippet in collab environment uh, and execute the code right so uh, this is a very good uh, demonstration of how gpt4 uh, the enhancements that are available in gpt4 can be made use of to do a machine learning model building exercise we are going to look at uh, a retail scenario and we will make use of uh, chat gpt's competitor google bard i am going to provide uh, the link uh, to the data set that is i have stored the data set in github i am providing the link i am checking if google bard can access the data it is unable to access the data uh, i want to ask if google bard is able to understand the data uh, it may not process the data can it at least understand the data uh, it is unable to understand the data so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the first 20 rows of the data set and paste the data in the prompt area and i'm asking do you understand the below data as i said we are considering a retail scenario and we are assessing the uh, sales based on the spends in tv radio and newspaper uh, google bard is able to understand the data in fact it provides some insights from the data uh, it provides information like uh, so much was spent on advertising so much was spent on radio so much was spent on newspaper okay it also provides a conclusion that tv advertising is the most effective medium followed by radio advertising and newspaper adver advertising this obviously means that google bard is able to analyze the data it has used some uh, analysis techniques in arriving at the conclusion so i ask how have you arrived at the conclusion because i want to understand what technique uh, google bard has used so let's see what google bard uh, provides as a response uh, google indicates that it arrived at the conclusion based on the correlation although it doesn't tell what is the correlation coefficient uh, or uh, coefficient of determination because those two are the primary metrics while assessing the relationship between two factors between an independent variable and a dependent variable google is not providing any such detail it only indicates which is better and which is the uh, next one in terms of effectiveness as far as sales is concerned okay it also provides some additional uh, information it says to further investigate the relationship between advertising and sales i need to collect more data why it provides the reason for this statement also it says that correlation does not equal causation that's a very very important factor just because there is correlation doesn't mean that that particular factor draw the results it is entirely possible that there there could be additional factors i did not mention this google bard is bringing in this uh, perspective on its own please note this i did not mention anything 
I merely pasted three factors and an output TV, radio, and newspaper, and the impact on sales. So there were four columns. I asked what kind of analysis can be done, what inferences can be made. It correctly analyzed and indicated a particular medium to be the most effective. Okay. Now it is suggesting go and look at additional factors. That is something I did not ask. Okay. So before going into that, let me ask, uh, can you give Python code to do these analysis? Remember the objective is to get the code snippet, you know, so that I can go run this code. Uh, here Google Bard is providing uh, Python code. However, Google has combined the advertising, TV and uh, radio data, okay, uh, and newspaper data and calls this as advertising. Remember, I had three distinct columns, TV, radio, and newspaper. You know, they, is, they are spent on advertising, and we used those three media to drive sales. Google Bard on its own has combined the three columns. I did not ask. Okay. Good or bad, it depends. I feel this is something beyond what I asked. I did not like it. I want Google Bard to consider these three factors individually. But that's how, that's what Google Bard has done. It has combined the three columns. It has run the correlation and it says that the correlation coefficient is uh, 0 0.87654321, which means there is a strong correlation. That is good, right? Remember, this is not what I asked Google Bard to do. Google Bard understood the data and is doing these additional analysis. I am not saying that these analysis are wrong. Okay. All I am pointing is it is doing analysis on its own. That's not the direction I wanted Google Bard to take. Because I wanted Google Bard to consider the three factors individually. In this case, it has combined. Okay. As indicated earlier, it is suggesting go and look at additional factors that could have an impact on sales. True, it is very much possible that additional factors could be at play. This is definitely confusing to me as an user of Google Bard because I asked Google Bard to do a particular analysis. It is doing some other analysis. It is not wrong, but it's not something I wanted. Okay. So I am bringing Google Bard back into the discussion. So I am providing the context once again. Remember Google Bard as of now in May 2023, is not as effective as chat GPT. It is good, but not good enough. Okay. So I am providing the context once again and asking additional questions. There are three factors in the data set, TV, radio, and uh, other, another advertising uh, medium. I asked about other factors. Why are you giving uh, information about other things? So Google Bard, in fact, apologizes and provides uh, other factors that could be considered but still, Google Bard is missing the point. Okay. I'm saying give Python code to analyze the factors impacting sales in the below data set. Here, TV, radio, newspaper is what I'm considering. Right. I'm asking, give me the code. Right. So, Google Bard has provided the code. Here again, it has gone beyond the brief. Okay. It has generated data on its own for factors like product quality, price, seasonality, competition, and other things. I did not ask Google Bard to do this. Please note. Right? So Google Bard has generated uh, additional factors and is asking us to consider. This may be possible in real life, may not be possible because you cannot just like that add uh, data in a real life uh, data set. In an experimental data set, it is possible. If you note, it has computed the correlation coefficient for the new set of factors as well. Okay, so it has given and is giving the inference also. Fine, let's continue with what Google Bard has provided. Although this is not very efficient, let's continue the uh, process and ask Google Bard to fit a machine learning model. So, what is the output variable? Sales is the output variable or the, or the dependent variable. The independent variables are factors like product quality, advertising, 
seasonality, competition, so on and so forth. We could fit a linear regression, logistic regression, decision tree, random forest or any of this. I am saying use decision tree. So here Google Bard is giving us uh, the relevant code, okay, very crisp, concise one and it also indicates uh, the level of fitment, okay, the correlation coefficient here which is uh, 0 0.92. It indicates the fit is good. Remember, this is experimental data. The data I provided initially is a real life data. Okay. We analyze the spend on uh, TV, radio, and newspaper advertising, and we analyze what is the impact of uh, those factors on the sales. Right. So, Google Bard went beyond the brief, combined the three factors into one factor, and called it as advertising. That is, the spend on TV, radio, and newspaper were combined to call. Uh, were combined and called as advertising. So, advertising is now one factor and then it introduced additional factors, uh, created data on its own, it has analyzed, it computed the correlation coefficient uh, and based on my request, it fitted uh, a machine learning model, right, in this case decision tree, okay. And it gave the uh, goodness of fit as well. So, this is a good exercise. Although I am not happy with the fact that Google Bard went beyond my brief, went beyond my ask. An important point for you to notice how I changed the prompt based on the responses from Google Bard. If you have to make use of a large language model like ChatGPT or Google Bard, you must have a base level understanding of machine learning and you should have worked for a while in machine learning. Then you can derive more value out of Google Bard or ChatGPT. If you are going to start off your learning with ChatGPT or Google Bard, your learning may not be very effective. In this session, let us understand some very useful features of Google Bard. Uh, let's start with this particular prompt on how to improve the accuracy of a machine learning model. Let's see what kind of response we get. Google has provided some very useful inputs like collecting more data, cleaning and pre-processing your data, feature engineering, uh, cross-validation and ensemble learning. If you see there is option for viewing other drafts. This is draft 1, there is also the draft 2 and then there is also the draft 3. It may appear similar, but if you go through the contents, Google is definitely bringing some variation in its response. This is a very, very useful feature. Let's look at one more example. Uh, give me Python code to address missing values in a data set. Let's wait for the response from Google. As in the previous example, we have draft 2 and draft 3. But here, I want to explain the other option that is available with Google. You can Google and search for articles, blog posts and other information related to how to address missing values. That is one option. The other is, you can also export this to Gmail, Docs and more importantly to Colab. Colab, as you know, is the Google's development environment. Let's click Colab and see where it takes us. See here, new notebook has been saved in the drive and I can open Colab and the code opens for me in the Colab environment. I can go and execute and finish the task. This is very useful, right? In this session, let us understand about prompt engineering. Prompt engineering as a term is relatively new. In fact, it has become very famous in the recent times, especially in the last 3-4 months, coinciding with the arrival of ChatGPT. What is prompt engineering? Prompt engineering is nothing but the art and science of interviewing or asking questions to the other person so that the other person can provide 
the kind of information you are looking for, the kind of response you are expecting. We have been interviewing people for a long time. So there are some best practices when it comes to interviewing, which is what we are going to see now. Let us understand that the techniques and best practices that I am referring to interviewing are very much applicable for engaging with ChatGPT. Because what are we doing in ChatGPT? We are asking questions and ChatGPT is providing responses. So the best practices that we are going to see now are very useful for engaging with ChatGPT or any other AI system with which you are engaging. Okay. So the first thing when it comes to prompt engineering or interviewing is you need to provide the context and explain the purpose. There is a reason why you are asking the question, right? So start by providing the context. That's very, very important. You must explain the purpose. You're going to do this explanation briefly. You're not going to provide a long paragraph. You're going to condense the context and you're going to explain the purpose. So this is the starting point. Okay. The next one is ask specific questions. Specificity always helps. Otherwise, an AI model like ChatGPT can provide global responses. It can even be sometimes misleading or erroneous. So always use specific questions. The next one is ask follow up questions. ChatGPT or the AI model may not provide a comprehensive response in the first instance. So you must be prepared to ask follow up questions, right? So this really helps. In fact, all three that I've listed and the two more that I'm going to explain are used by interviewers for a long time, okay? So we are bringing those best practices into the chat GPT scenario, okay? The next one is role play. If chat GPT or the AI model is not able to provide or has not provided the kind of inputs you are expecting by using these three approaches, switch gears and move to role play. In role play, you ask questions like, assume that you are an expert and then answer. Assume that you are Mr. X and then provide the response. You can even ask if you had to guess a response to this question, what would that be? So role play is a way of providing a different perspective, okay, to the process of asking questions and eliciting responses. So use this to your advantage. Role play is very, very helpful. Last but not the least, have patience, okay. Many times we get responses fairly quickly, fairly easily. In many other scenarios, it takes a lot of time. So you need to have patience and you need to reframe questions. Role play is one of the ways of reframing questions. Okay. So always reframe questions if you are not getting the expected response. So these three, uh, these five best practices can be used by you so that you get the kind of response you are expecting so that you get a comprehensive response to the problem or the opportunity at hand. Okay. In this session, we will see how to write prompts in different ways so that we can derive maximum value out of ChatGPT. The prompt I am starting off with is, I want to create a program to develop a calculator that will do addition, subtraction, multiplication and division for any two numbers. Just note how clearly I am indicating my requirement. I am indicating the programming language in which the computer program should be written. I am indicating the functionalities of the calculator. I am also telling that these steps, these computations should be for any two numbers only. It is not for three numbers or four numbers. Specificity is very important 
when you want to derive maximum value out of chat gpt okay now that we have written the prompt let's ask chat gpt for the response the response from chat gpt is a python program that will carry out the four arithmetic operations uh, the python program uses five different functions the first four functions for are for each of the arithmetic operations and the fifth function is for the user to choose the kind of arithmetic operation he or she wants a brief explanation of the code is also provided at the end of the program this will help us to understand uh, key functionalities key aspects of the program i now want to improvise this program so i am going to introduce a role play i am going to ask chat gpt to assume the role of an expert programmer so the prompt i am asking is if this program were to be written by an expert programmer how will it look so my prompt is if this program is written by an expert in programming what changes will be made and why let's see the response from chat gpt chat gpt says that an experienced programmer will make it more modular extensible and robust to errors okay it is making use of object oriented concepts in programming class objects these are concepts in object oriented programming python is an object oriented programming language many learners of uh, data science and machine learning forget this aspect of uh, python that is the object oriented programming concepts of python uh, writing a program using object oriented programming concepts is always more efficient uh, i strongly encourage uh, the machine learning and data science enthusiasts to learn object oriented programming concepts in python and make use of them while writing code uh, as in the previous example chat gpt has tried to explain the code here it has given salient points of the code if you don't understand any part of the code you can mention that part of the code and ask chat gpt to explain it will do the job okay now i want to introduce some additional prompts and see how chat gpt responds i want to ask if i want this program to run faster what kind of changes should i make a program like this can be used for simple data set could be used for complex data set could be used for a very big data set all of us want a faster and more efficient uh, processing of data the set of codes we have written is no doubt good but we want the code to run faster we want the entire process to run faster and more efficiently so i want to ask chat gpt are there additional changes that i can introduce so that the entire program runs faster let's see the response from chat gpt chat gpt correctly mentioned that this is a simple program and the program ran pretty much instantly if it is a simple program what could be the opportunities chat gpt is giving us lot of opportunities lot of options for us to consider and evaluate we could use built in functions built in functions are usually optimized and they run faster than custom code you can use python's built in uh, c profile module and it can identify bottlenecks in the program you can use faster python implementations you can optimize the program further so these are all opportunities that one could consider to make the program run faster how many of us would have thought of these opportunities understand this is a very simple program yet chat gpt is able to identify so many opportunities now i am going to change the prompt to bring some additional flavor to bring additional details that we all could learn the prompt i am going to use is what kind of mistakes would a young professional would a novice make while creating 
this kind of a program that's my prompt remember the way an expert programmer writes the way a young programmer writes is very different right when you are starting off you tend to make mistakes so i am asking chat gpt to identify the kind of mistakes a young learner would make okay all of us can identify especially young learners the opportunities or the areas that are overlooked by young young learners are not handling ex exceptions incorrect indentation improper variable naming not using functions ignoring user input errors and last but not the least is lack of comments lack of comments is a very very important one right if you are starting off please take care of this we indicate a comment using the hash symbol right it's very simple deceptively simple if you are a young professional listening to this make sure this six areas are addressed even experienced programmers should take care of these uh, six aspects so we are getting different responses to different prompts the scenario is the same we took a simple program to create a calculator by using different prompts we have got different responses we could use them to learn machine learning and python programming better now i'm going to switch gears i'm going to introduce a new program a program to identify outliers in a data set there is a program that is already written i am asking chat gpt to optimize the code to improve the code so my prompt is optimize the below code let's see the response from chat gpt this is a simple one right there is a data set i want a program to be written to identify outliers even in a simple scenario chat gpt is able to identify areas where optimization can be done okay one such opportunity is vectorization okay the other one is about memory usage plus couple of other opportunities have been indicated in addition to the code chat gpt provides pertinent details which could be made use of for optimizing the code further Finally I asked ChatGPT whether any functions or libraries are available to compute outliers to identify outliers in a data set There are many libraries uh, that are available to identify outliers in a data set uh, ChatGPT is indicating uh, five libraries that we could make use of to identify outliers So we asked different questions we got different response the two examples we considered in this session are fairly simple ones in spite of taking a very simple example chat gpt is able to identify improvement opportunities ways to optimize the code and different perspectives on the code itself that is the power of prompting in this session let us understand the data privacy issues that could arise by the use of artificial intelligence tools like chat gpt tools like chat gpt are trained on the data that is available on the internet so it is essentially public data that you and i have created data that you and i have left on the internet chat gpt continuously improves itself continuously trains itself with our data when i say our data i am referring to the data that we leave with chat gpt in the form of questions and the subsequent responses so if your organization if your team members are using chat gpt you must be aware of the privacy issues your team members could be using chat gpt to write emails to create presentations and to generate content to even writing software code many of these work 
that I talked about may have confidentiality requirements. Once you have fed data into chat GPT, it is no longer private and confidential. So you must keep these things in your mind. The first and foremost action that you can take is to monitor the usage continuously. Assess the content that is being developed with the help of chat GPT for originality requirements and copyright issues. The next one is about creating a list of acceptable tools to your organizations. The number of tools that leverage the power of chat GPT is increasing day by day and it will definitely be confusing to your teams. So create a whitelist, create a list of approved tools so that your team can take appropriate decisions. Regular training and audit is a must since this is a new area and the opportunity for mistake is higher even among experienced employees. The next one is about having a policy document for using chat GPT and other such tools and the associated confidentiality and privacy challenges. This is very important because once a policy is there, employees can refer and have their queries addressed. In the absence of a documented policies, there is the risk of assumptions being made. We should make every effort to avoid such mishaps. So have a clear documented policy which can be accessed by employees whenever they have questions or doubts. Okay. All the actions that I have covered so far are applicable to your vendor organizations as well because we all use vendors. So all the actions that I mentioned apply equally to our vendors. Ensure the vendors are adequately sensitized, trained and monitored. The growth of chat GPT is very similar to the growth we saw when internet became popular. So don't take these private privacy and confidentiality issues associated with chat GPT and other such tools lightly. 